Thursday, January 12, 2010, 4.53 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. An earthquake with a magnitude of 7.0 on the Richter scale struck the island nation of Haiti, its epicenter 16 miles west of the capital of Port-au-Prince. Within the 60 seconds that the quake shook the Western Hemisphere's poorest nation, an estimated 230,000 people died and 300,000 more were injured many of whom were trapped inside and crushed by collapsing concrete buildings. An estimated 30,000 commercial buildings and 250,000 private residences were damaged or destroyed, leaving more than one million Haitians homeless. Seven months earlier, World Council of Credit Unions launched its first cooperative development efforts in Haiti, serving as lead implementer for a three-year, $34.4 million multi-partner program funded by the U.S. Agency for International Development through the Academy for Educational Development. The Haiti Integrated Financing for Value Chains and Enterprises program, known as High Five, works with the financial sector to bring savings, credit, and remittance services to underserved areas of the country. It also provides technical training to small and medium-sized enterprises. High Five was also touched by the quake, losing its headquarters, but thankfully none of its staff to the disaster. Many of Haiti's 175 credit unions, known as case populaires in the country's French language, were seriously damaged in the earthquake. A number of them were completely destroyed. The largest branch of Côte d'Alene, located in downtown Port-au-Prince, was reduced to rubble. Since January 12th, we've been very serious about getting back on our feet and are trying to convince our members we can give them the same services we could before the earthquake. But it will take a long time and great efforts on the part of other organizations to help us rebuild our offices. We will be fighting against all obstacles to continue to provide services for our members. Other credit unions face similar fates, including Sakash, also in Port-au-Prince. With its building seriously damaged, Sakash now operates from a tent. It's one of more than 100 such tents provided to credit unions and their employees by World Council with the assistance of IRAC, our member organization in Haiti's neighboring country, the Dominican Republic. The tents serve as immediate need for housing, but it's a solution officials hope will only be temporary as Haiti's microfinance sector struggles to help its country rebuild. The microfinance and credit union sector is very important in Haiti. It is the hope of small entrepreneurs because it helps them start and operate their businesses, and it helps them support their families. It is one of the things that will help Haiti heal. But significant challenges face credit unions even outside the primary earthquake zone. Haiti's credit unions lack any type of insurance coverage, and many members who died in the disaster have left behind unpaid loan balances. Other members who have lost homes and businesses no longer have the means to satisfy their debts, often leaving credit union balance sheets in worse shape than the structures in which the institutions operate. Without an influx of capital to satisfy liquidity needs, even relatively undamaged credit unions run the risk of failure. Despite these challenges, Haiti's credit unions continue to reach out to people in trouble, doing what they can with what they have to meet members' growing and increasingly desperate needs. Case Populaire St. Joseph, known by its acronym CAPOSAGE, is located three hours south of Port-au-Prince. The credit union, which sits next door to St. Joseph Catholic Church, is part of a community that includes primary and secondary schools, a medical clinic, and even a dental office all of which receive credit union support. The credit union serves members of the St. Joseph Parish, as well as anyone else from the community in need. When the earthquake struck, I was working in the credit union. I heard a large boom, and I thought that an airplane had crashed. When I came outside, it looked like the credit union and church were going to collapse into each other. I called my family to make sure that they were okay. Despite suffering its own severe damage, the credit union found itself providing relief for an influx of refugees from Port-au-Prince. People who lost everything had returned to live with relatives 
in an attempt to get back on their feet and begin forging new lives. During the earthquake, my house in Port-au-Prince collapsed, and I lost everything. My sister came to get me and my two children, and we're living here now. The credit union gave me a little money to buy the things I need, but I've had to ask my sister and some of the neighbors for help as well. I have health problems and find it difficult to work. If I can get some financial help, maybe from you, then I can start a small business so I can at least afford to send my children to school. Life after the earthquake has been hard for everyone. Many of our members had to start over with nothing. Many of them had trouble repaying their loans before the earthquake. But business activities have slowed and loan payments have slowed. Now it takes two to three months to repay one month's loan payment. But sometimes, even the smallest glimmer of progress can provide a ray of hope. Pierre Dornis is a farmer, a basket maker, and a volunteer minister of the Church of God in the Prophecy. He is also a member of Clef Credit Union in Leogon, which now operates out of a World Council tent. On January 12th, he watched from his yard as his house collapsed and his church turned to rubble. But despite his losses, he is still able to make deposits in his credit union savings account, helping to support Clef's struggling bottom line. I am able to save at my credit union and still make a deposit each month. My two sons are also credit union members. They save and take out loans to support their small business, making products out of wood. The credit union is very important to me, and it is very important to my sons as well. The ability of Pierre Durandis and others to make small member deposits is a sign of faith in their institutions. It also offers a glimmer of hope that one day Haiti's credit union movement will be even stronger than before and better able to provide financial services to a population in desperate need. The role that credit unions and global credit union members can play in helping to build Haiti back to where it was and hopefully beyond where it was is just critical. The capital to start or to continue to expand a small business to feed the family, send the kid to school, that comes from the money that's available at the Kesses and at the microfinance instances, not from the banks. Haiti has the potential to substantially expand its GDP in the next couple of years, but it's going to take the the work of all the population who are going to have to have access to credit. And for 80% of the country's population, they're on the informal market side, you know, small, unregulated businesses um, that do have great potential but that need access to capital. Kesses that are suffering because of write-offs, Kesses that are suffering because their facilities are not operational or who have personnel shortages or personnel who are traumatized by the impact of the earthquake aren't operating 100% of their capacity, and they're going to need financial assistance and technical assistance to do that. In the wake of the earthquake, World Council launched a Haiti relief campaign that raised more than $1 million from credit unions worldwide. The funds were earmarked to provide immediate relief in the form of food and water for Haiti's people in the tents out of which damaged credit unions now operate and their employees now live. Our next steps include the funding of necessary psychological counseling for credit union staff members and assessing the damage to credit union buildings with an eye towards possible reconstruction assistance. With the critical support of donor organizations and the global credit union movement, World Council of Credit Unions is committed to helping Haiti's people survive and one day thrive through the economic and social strengths that credit unions provide. It is our mission, our obligation, and our privilege to help create a brighter future for Haiti its credit unions, and the members they serve.